good morning everybody. I hope you're all good this morning. I have something to share with you. Oh, really? Yes, I do. Did you know that it doesn't matter if the sun is shining, if it is lashing rain, if it is stormy outside, it doesn't matter if you're low in your mood, it doesn't matter if you're high in your mood, it doesn't matter what you are, what you are feeling, who you are, what you have done, but God never ever changes. He is the same as he was yesterday, that he is today and will be tomorrow. He is the only, only constant that will be in your life. There you go. Amen. Come on. So this morning we're going to worship. Bring it on. Stop. So this morning we're going to worship the constant God. I invite your feet if that's what you're comfortable with. If not, sit, stand, do whatever you like. Jesus, we just worship you here this morning. Father, I just thank you that we can just rely on you yeah. through it's all so weather, okay. all storms, yeah. Jesus. You are just so faithful and so good. And we just bring our worship to you this morning in Jesus' name. The King of my heart, be the one to wear.
It's so good to be with you all this morning. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I'm Ellie. I'm part of the team here at the Community Church in Omaha. Hello, Eileen. Good morning. Guys, can we just give it up for the worship Come team this morning? Yeah. So, as I said, I'm Ellie, and you are so welcome here this morning, whether it's your first time or whether it's your hundredth millionth time. <laughs> You are so welcome in this house. And so this morning, speaking about welcome, you will find a welcome card, or should have found a welcome card, on your seat this morning. And this is a way that you can connect with the team here at the community church. So if you have a pastoral need, a physical need, you just want to get to know what's the crack about this place, you'd love to speak to the team about how you can maybe serve and get involved, then that is the card that you fill out. So if you'd like to, you're very welcome to leave your details and if you're watching online you can do that by our website so that's that one and then you will see that I have an envelope in my hand as well so that's also on your seat and that's because we are a church that loves to give back into our community yeah. and that's the way we do that we invest by giving and so if you feel comfortable today you don't have to but even if you have only a pound in your pocket we would be so grateful if you could put it in the envelope and then put it in the box at the back of the room or alternatively you can go to our website again and give online and that's appropriate guys because here are the announcements for this week so you can give your time this week guys by getting involved on our tuesday connect group now this week it's not on but it will be on next week and it's a firecracker yes. so you should definitely come along yeah, half yeah, seven yeah, yeah, yeah. alan and susan lead it we love you guys yeah. and we love how you serve us um yeah. so definitely come along you're so so welcome but in the meantime you can put dates in your diary because on the 29th of this month we're going to be doing a special offering and it's for our kids ministry so i don't know if you know me but i am leading the team here at um, the church for kids and if you know me you'll know i'm the biggest kid around so really you're giving into me being more of a kid but no in all seriousness we love our kids our kids are the next generation yeah. of the church come on. And, and god didn't say you know let ch some children come to me he said let all children yeah come to me when when children were not at the center of society jesus said hey i want you and i want to invest come in on. you so know that when you're giving on that sunday you're giving into the future generations yes. of this church so and i don't know about you but i am buzzing off that yeah. so so exciting and so then on the 11th of june we are having a work day <laughs> upstairs so we're in the process of trying to get the building secure and up to scratch. Alan's done an incredible yes, job. Yes, amen. Really incredible job. But he can't do it alone. And so you guys have the opportunity to come along on that Saturday to serve, to give even half an hour of your day to come and say, hey, I want to build the church. And what you're investing in up there, you're investing in the youth space, in the kids space. So again, you're saying, I see the importance of this family and I want to be a part of it. How special is that? Okay, so that's all my announcements. Um, but here, we're just going to take a few minutes to pray and then we'll release the kids. So let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this morning. We thank you that you are just for everybody, no matter the age, no matter the history or the past. God, you say what's important is the present. And I just thank you, God, that you can strengthen us, that you can just be with us in this moment, God. So do that. Be with us. Let our hearts be open and our ears be um, intentive to hear to what you have to say through Pastor Tim. And just bless him as he comes and speaks this morning. So in your name we pray. Amen. And I'll release Amen. the kids. Hey, good morning, everybody. Are we good? Good morning, Timothy. Yeah, hey, it's good to see you. And um, if you want to uh, say hello to your neighbour there just for a sec while I try and uh, get myself um, set up here. Hey, special um, hello to our online guests this morning. Um, our, our good friend Elish is, is watching online as well, so she just sent a wee message there. Hey, we, we love you. Hope life on the North Coast is, is treating you well. And um, I'm sorry that I've called you out this morning. Um, but there you go. It's, um, it's all good in it. Hey, look, guys, it's been a while since I've had the opportunity 
to come and to, uh, to communicate something of God's heart towards you. So I'm um, so grateful that we have uh, a team here that is building and growing and our, our communicators are, are, are growing in strength and, and number. And I, and I feel it's a real honor that we get to allow these things to happen where we're equipping the saints for service and that, that there is a team growing and it's an honor and a privilege to be able to give the platform away. But I also mean this with all sincerity as an honor and a privilege to take the platform as well and to be able to communicate something of God's heart to you as the church and to us as his children this morning. And so this is talk this morning is entitled, I am the child of God. And um, it's really just a, a chapter of the book that I'm, that, that I'm writing at the moment. You guys will know that I've been attempting to write a book for a while. And the book is called I Am. And so this morning, I want to kind of speak <coughs> into this area of I am a child of God. What is available to us as children of God and how we can respond to God as, as his children. And so some of the stories, if you have been journeying with us for a while... Some of the stories will be familiar to you if you're joining us online. They won't be, or if you're new in the room this morning, they won't be. But for those of you who have a familiarity with the stories, don't be going, oh, here we go again. Tap into the learning and relearn the lessons and ask God to reveal something new to you through the uh, delivery of, 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 of story. And so let me tell you about the time that I saw Jesus and knock. Is that okay? So anybody who... Um, has never been to Knock, or if you're unfamiliar with Knock, or, or, or where it is, let me tell you what Wikipedia says uh, about Knock. Okay, Wikipedia describes Knock like this it says, Knock is a village in County Mayo, Ireland. Its notability is derived from the Knock Shrine as approved uh, by, uh, as an approved, sorry, Catholic, sh Catholic shrine and place of pilgrimage where the faithful believe that the Blessed Virgin Mary. This will, these other two were new to me. St. Joseph and St. John the Evangelist appeared on the 21st of August, 1879. Okay, so if you've ever been to Knock, okay, I would describe Knock like this personally, okay? Knock is the Christian equivalent of Blackpool. Anybody ever been to Blackpool? You'll know that when you go to Blackpool, it is full of souvenirs, okay? There are sticks of rock, there are pictures, there are, you name it, you can get it. It's made in China and it comes to Blackpool, okay? Well, you can imagine just for a minute, okay, that in terms of religious relics and Christian souvenirs, that knock is the equivalent of Blackpool in Ireland to the Catholic Church, okay, or to Christians, or whoever wants to go and see where the Blessed Mary, Virgin Mary came, where St. Joseph came, and where St. John the, the Evangelist came, okay. I don't know whether they came or not. I wasn't there. I'm not going to debate that at all. This is just the reality of this environment and space and place that it is, okay. So when I was a kid, we always had a camper van, okay, or a tent, or a caravan or some mode of transport that would allow us to travel and enjoy family time together. And I, I don't think that there's a major city in Ireland that I haven't been to, but I've been to some of them more than once, and Knock tends to be one, was one of them, okay? So on one particular trip to Knock, okay, we're doing the usual thing. We went and we licked the wall and we touched the shrine and, you know, we got the holy water that you know, that everybody, all the kids had spat in, and then we blessed ourselves, and you know, all of those things, because that's what tends to happen, okay, anyway, don't judge me, I'm just telling it like I see it, and um, and so we were on this particular one, and we done that, we went to the chapel, we did the shrine, you know, and we're walking up the street, and as we're walking up the street, I see this beautiful picture of Jesus in the window, okay, picture of Jesus in the window, it's described as the sacred heart picture, and this sacred heart picture has beams of light coming out of the chest of Jesus Christ. If you've never seen it, Google it, sacred heart picture, it is a stunning um, imagery of the beauty just being released from the heart of God. But as I'm walking up the street, I notice the eyes in the picture are following me. Totally freaked me out. I went this way, eyes on me. This way, Eyes on me. I walked a wee bit this way. Eyes on me. Walked a wee bit that way. Eyes on me. And I thought, oh my goodness. The Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ himself, is trying to get my attention. I am in the middle of Knock where the Virgin came. 
No, Jesus has come to me. So my mommy and my daddy are there. Sister's there and all blood drenched from my face. And they're standing, laughing. And they're laughing because they knew what had just taken place. You see, the picture that I was looking at was a holographic image specifically designed that if you moved, the eyes moved with it. The joke was on me. But here's the thing, and here's what I want you to capture, and this is what I want you to recognize in this moment, is that in that season of my life, I had the faith to believe that God would want to have a relationship with me, and he chose to appear to me on the streets of Knox. You see, there's never, and I say this with the greatest of integrity, there has never, ever been a day in my life where I have not believed in the reality of God. There has never been a day in my life where I have not believed that God was in heaven and that he had created the earth. My issue was always this. If God is so holy and God is so perfect and God is so righteous and he is sovereign, why on earth would he want to have anything to do with somebody like me? In the days before I had gone to knock with my parents, in the, in the season before that, I used to go and I used to take money from my mommy's purse. And I used to go and I used to buy sweets for the whole street and let the friend in. And that was how I lived my life. So I was a thief. I was a liar. I was a cheat. So why would God and his holiness... And why would God in his perfectness and why would God in his righteousness want to have anything to do with somebody like me? I have always, prior to my life-defining moment where I confessed with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believed in my heart that God raised him from the dead, I have always struggled with the idea and the concept of us being children of God. Why would God want somebody like me? Why would God want somebody like you? Because none of you are good. None of you are perfect. We all have sinned. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. Why would God want to have anything to do with us? And why would God want us to be his children? And maybe you feel the same. Maybe you find yourself thinking to yourself, if that is the heart of God, if that is the character of God, and that is the nature of God, why on earth would he send a son to die for me? Why on earth would I be forgiven sins? Why on earth? How on earth could I be a child of God? But yet we see in the Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the Ephesus church, he writes in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 that God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. God decided in advance. Amen. It wasn't your postcode. It wasn't your surname. It wasn't your devilishly handsome good looks, Alan. Alan. It wasn't your bank balance. It wasn't your academia. It wasn't your degree. It was a decision that he made in advance. You see, our position as children of God, the reality of us being children of God has nothing to do with our conduct and everything to do with God's character. In advance, before the world began, God chose to make you. And it pleased Him to make you. In spite of everything that God knew about you, in spite of everything that God knew that you were going to do or not do, that you were going to say or not say, the places that you were going to go or, or not go, not only did he choose to make you, but he chose to save you and adopt you into his family as a child of God. Before the creation of the world, God decided that he wanted us as his children. 
But in order for us to become his children, he sent Jesus from heaven to earth to live the perfect life so that he could become the perfect sacrifice so that through faith we could become perfect and holy. Do you hear that? <laughs> through faith in Jesus Christ, we are made perfect and holy. His only request is this, that we believe in the one whom he sent. You see, our right to be called as children is given to us through faith in God's Son. I stand here today before you. You sit here today as a child of God because of our faith in Jesus Christ. And as a child of God, we have been given a new identity. And not only have we given, been given a new identity, but it is also accompanied with the promise of God's eternal presence, God's eternal protection, and God's eternal provision. Some of you will know that CCI, or Christian Churches Ireland, run a youth camp every year. It's called Pulse Camp. Jenny and I have had the honor and privilege of being a part of it for longer than, than I can remember. I've served that faithfully for, for years. Christina now sits on the team that oversees and, and coordinates it all. And a number of years ago, there was a, a beautiful couple from the States called Terry and Christina Parkman. Terry and Christina Parkman have become friends of mine. They are the next gen overseers for a great move of churches in the States called River Valley. And they've got two daughters. Their daughters' names are Avali and the other one. Nova. Avali and Nova. There we go. They're both adopted from China. So the history and the journey of these two kids being adopted was that they were living in orphanages in very difficult circumstances. When Avali was born, she was born with a class plate. And so what would happen is that and when you hear Terry tell the story or when you speak to Christina, you can catch their hearts for their children straight away. But when they talk about their, their, their journey to, to, to Avali, when Avali was born with a cleft left, what would happen is that as the babies were being fed, the people who were overseeing the orphanage, when the babies were in their beds, would walk around and each child was given a certain amount of time with a bottle in their mouth. But because Avali had a cleft lip, she couldn't suck the way the other babies did, so she was incredibly malnourished. She was very, very, very ill. She was very, very, very sick. And when the Parklands got her back to America, they didn't know if she was going to make it. But they had the faith to believe that she would, but they didn't know if she was going to, if that makes sense. And so she was brought on this incredible journey, and both these girls have been brought into this wonderful family. They've been given a new identity. They're the Parkmans. But not only have they been given a new identity, but they've also been given the promise of the presence of their parents for a lifetime. And not only have they been given the promise of the presence of their parents, but they've been given the promise of the provision of their parents and the protection of their parents as well. Does it remind you of any other relationship that we might be aware of in the church? As children of God, the Father promises us his presence. I will never leave you nor forsake you. He promises us his presence. He promises us his provision. He promises us his protection. And what else does he do? He promises to give us his power. What a God. As children of God, these are the things that are available to us. And at the heart of being a Christian, what it means is that we receive a new identity. We become citizens of heaven, members of the family of God. And we journey to become our true selves, living in the freedom Jesus won for us on the cross. Paul writes it in his second letter to the church in Corinth, that in Christ Jesus, we are new creations. Hey! Let me just say that again. Maybe I'll get a better response. In Christ Jesus, we are new creations. Ooh, yay. Come on. 
God love you. Not only are we new creations, but we have been given the capacity as new creations to live, to love, to serve, and to grow just like Him. I gotta be honest with you, there are days in my life when I really have to wrestle with this. Because my old self, my old flesh would love to remind me of the things that I've done. Hey, remember the day you robbed your dad with a knife? Hey, remember you used to sleep with people for money? Hey, remember you used to sleep with people for emotional support and physical support and financial gain? Hey, remember how you used to break into people's houses? Hey, remember how you used to lie all the time? Remember how you used to cheat all the time? Remember how you used to let people down all of the time? And I've got to keep coming back to the reality of the cross of Jesus Christ as the child of God to go, I am no longer a slave to that. Hallelujah. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to sin because I am a child of God. Hallelujah. And whilst our spirits have been renewed, whilst our hearts have been renewed, whilst we have been given a new identity, I feel like we need to constantly be reminding ourselves of these things as we delight ourselves in the Lord. Christ won freedom for us on the cross and as children of God we get to live in that freedom. Amen. We're no longer a slave to our past. He's turned our graves into gardens. He's given us beauty for ashes. He turns our hopelessness and he transforms it into hope. Amen. He takes our death and he gives us life. He takes our old self and he pours new wine into it and he makes us new creations in Christ Jesus. Amen. We, as the children of God, are clothed in robes of righteousness. We, as the children of God, are forgiven. We are chosen. We are set apart. And... Not only that, we are filled with the Spirit of the living God. And everything that we need for life and godliness has been given to us through the presence, provision, power and protection of God. Yeah. You have everything you need. As a child of God, you have everything you need. The resources of heaven are yours. And I think for, for some of us, that's a, that's a massive challenge because we look at our lives, we look at the, the chaos that's surrounding us, we look at the, the circumstances that we find ourselves in and we can very easily begin to live defeated. We can very easily begin to look at our relationships, look at our finances, look at our health and look at the places and spaces that we are inhabiting and think, does God really love me? Is God really for me? Is God even with me? If I'm promised his presence, his power and protection, where is he? He's right with you. And sometimes it can be easy to be distracted to those things. Nobody in this room will be surprised when I say that a number of years ago, my dad sat at my kitchen table and looked me straight in the eye and said, Tim, for all of my life I felt like a woman trapped in a man's body. And the next time that you see me, I'm not going to be Frank, I'm going to be Francis. <coughs> it's the most difficult thing that I've ever had to endure in my walk with God. And it would be very easy to think or to say, hey God, where are you in this? Or, God, why have you allowed this to happen to me? Or, God, why me? And God, why my family? And why not somebody else's family? And why, why do I have to kind of engage with the embarrassment of that? And why do I have to engage in, in, in the shame of that? And, well, just, like, I love God, and, and I love you, and Jesus is my Lord, and why can't this happen to somebody else that isn't in the church? I'm a pastor, I'm a leader. How am I going to engage with my congregation? How am I going to engage with the people that I lead and the people that I love and the people that I serve and say, me daddy wants to be me mommy in the best possible sense? It was a really difficult time. My daddy was going for gender realignment surgery. He was going from Frank to Francis. 
And I'll never forget the day and hour that I was walking towards meeting Francis for the first time. And as I was walking to the apartment that Francis was staying in, for the first time, I was utterly petrified. I was terrified. How am I going to react? What am I going to say? Am I going to get the right pronoun? He, she, ma, da, whatever. Right? Her, him. What if I say the wrong thing? Am I going to accept? Am I going to upset him, her? Um, if I get the, the moment wrong, if I walk in and I, and I fall apart, like, like, what am I going to do here? How am I going to engage? How am I going to respond to the situation and the circumstance that I find myself in? And I found myself as I was walking to the door. And I kid you not, I probably turned to run away at least 15 times in the 300 meter walk that, that, that I had to go. I would take a couple of steps and I'd be like, hey! Oh, no, I can't do this. <laughs> right? And I was, abs I was petrified. I was absolutely petrified. And it's funny how God uses our pasts to impact our present so that our futures will be different. And as I walk towards this door, and as I walk towards this person's flat to meet this imposter, this is in my head, this imposter, who was, who had just moved out of my parents' home and was staying in a, this apartment wasn't Francis's apartment, it was a friend of Francis's apartment. So not only was I going in to meet Francis for the first time, but there was also going to be a stranger there he had never met before to support my daddy, but I was on my own. And as I began to walk towards the, the door, I was reminded of a time in my life when I saw the protection, the provision, the presence, and the promise of a father, a father, transforming the journey of a, a child. And so as I'm walking towards the door, I remember that when we were kids, we used to go to Port Salem Beach in County Donegal. If you've never been to Port Salem Beach in County Donegal, I recommend you go. It was one of the first ever blue beaches, safe beaches in, in Donegal in the Republic of Ireland. Beautiful place. There's three beaches all uh, interlinked one beside each other. Back onto or overlooked by this beautiful mountain range. And it's just this stunning environment, okay? And we used to go wild camping quite a lot. And this particular night, we were camping in the wild. Mum and Dad were in the camper van. They had their sign up if it's rocking, don't come knocking. And um, we were in our, my sister and I were in the tent, okay? My sister and I are in the tent. Mommy and Daddy are in the uh, camper van playing Tiddlywinks. And um, so the next thing, I hear a group of young adults making some noise. And the noise started get, to get louder and louder and louder, and as the noise got louder, I started to get a little bit scared. We were maybe 10 at the time, 11 at the time, maybe even younger. And then I started to feel the tent shake. And these young adults thought it would be great crack to terrify two kids in the tent. Now, probably on the grand scheme of things, of problem reflection, looking back, they didn't mean us any harm. They were just having a bit of crack and a bit of banter, thinking it would be fun to shake the tent. But me and my sister, we were utterly, utterly terrified. She was screaming in tears, and I called out to my dad. My dad, said, I'm coming! And he came out and he says, open the zip and look at me! Just look at me! Open the zip and look at me! And he comes out and he is swinging with a canoe paddle. Swinging with a canoe paddle. And I kid you not, do you see if anybody had a got hit with the canoe paddle? They'd have lost their head. Because my daddy, as my father, had made a commitment to always protect me. My daddy, as my father, had made a commitment to always provide for me. My daddy, as my father, had made a commitment to always make sure that I would know his presence so that I would feel safe. And as he's swinging, he's saying, walk towards me. And my humor now would say, well, I probably was dodging as I got up. But I knew in that moment that my father's presence was enough to give me the confidence to begin to walk forward. I also knew that the weapons that my daddy had were greater than the weapons of the enemy. All they had with their fists, he had a canoe pot on. He was swinging. He was swinging. He was swinging. 
Why? Because he loved us. Why? Because he wanted to protect us. Why? Because as the Father, it's the Father's heart to protect his children. And so as I walk to this door, come back to the Francis encounter, as I walk to this door, I'm reminded of this. And because I'm reminded of this, I'm like, we'll throw off that fear. We'll throw off that negative thought. And you know what we'll do? We'll lift our heads, we'll puff our chest out, and we'll walk forward. Why? Because no weapon formed against me will ever prosper. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than anything else in this world. Why? Because my Father in heaven, as a child of God, has promised to never leave me nor forsake me. And no matter what I encounter at the other side of that door, his weapons are greater, his power is greater. He promises to be with me. And not only that, he promises to give me everything that I need for life and godliness. Amen. Everything. So that means I can love the unlovable. That means I can encounter difficult circumstances. That means I can embrace chaos. Why? Because I am a child of God. See, I need so many people in the church. And they have this false expectation of God. That as a child of God, we're given a trouble-free life. And that's not the case at all. It's anything but... That racism. Yes. It's anything but. Jesus never met anybody's expectation, only that of the Father. And what happens is this, is that we as children of God get these false expectations of the promises of God. And then these false expectations of the promises of God, we go into disappointment. And our disappointment leads to doubt. And our doubt causes us to question our faith and wonder, am I even a child of God? Am I even a child of God? Walking to that door on that day actually felt like I was walking into the lion's den. If you read the Old Testament book of Daniel in the first six chapters, you'll see two stories. One of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in a fire, in a pit, unharmed Why? Because the presence of God was there. The second story you'll see in the sixth chapter is one of Daniel in the lion's den. These are not made up stories, this is, this is real. Real stories that happen to teach us spiritual principles in the 21st century. Unharmed Why? Because God was with them. Unharmed, why? Because they were children of God. Unharmed, why? Because God had promised his presence, his protection, his power, and his provision for his children. Here's the thing, right? It was their faith. Hear me when I say this, and look at me when I say this. It was their faith that revealed God's favor. It was their Faith that revealed God's favor. In his letter to the church in Rome, Paul writes this. He says, because of our faith. It's Romans chapter 5 verse 2. He says, because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. So what we see here is our faith in Christ or through our faith in Christ <coughs> the favour of God is released and that's a really good sign. Paul then goes on and he writes this in the, in the next couple of verses he says this. He says we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loved us and loves us. 
because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Hey, what a God. So we know that as the church we can expect difficult times. We know that as children of God we can expect difficult times. Take it as a given. Expect it. It's coming. You're either walking to the mountain, up the mountain, on the mountain, down the mountain, or through the valley. It's either, right? It's never that. Okay? It's that. It's as simple as that. Right? Okay? But God promises 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 that through our faith he will reveal his favor when jenny and i finally were obedient is probably the best way to say it and we put our house on the market and we were <coughs> actually no, we haven't put our house on the market at this stage when we decided it was time to talk to our kids this is what i want to say when we decided that it was time for us to talk to the children about what we felt God was calling us to and leading us into, which was to sell our house, to move away from everything that we knew to be right and true, give up the ministries that we had to come and bring life and love and hope to the heart of Oma. We sat down with them on their birthday. What a great birthday present. <laughs> hey kids, we're about to turn your world upside down. Happy birthday! <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. And we sat in this restaurant together and as we began to engage in the conversation, the response as well, what about our schools and what about our friendships and what about our families and all of the things that were potentially difficult circumstances moving forward that would impact their lives dramatically and could potentially have negative consequences. One of us, I can't remember which, said this. If God has called us to this, then no matter how difficult it is, I guarantee you that God will give us everything we need to make it happen. You see, Paul writes to the church in Philippi and he actually says that God will meet all of our needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ. Jesus and he fills us with courage to take our faith steps and he positions us in relationships in which our needs are met so we sold our house we met this beautiful couple had a chat with Bob on the phone we met Marianne and we met Manu and then we ended up in Oma day one in Oma of the kids at school. We had an agreement that we would drive them to school, pick them up from school, and um, that that would be an ongoing thing for for a season until they settled, until they rested, until they felt comfortable in their new environment. Day one, Shannon Oshin, (coughs) home from school. You don't need to give us a lift tomorrow. Why not? Oh, we made some friends, that's all good. What did God do? Supplied what they needed for the journey. See, what God does is this, is that he gives us what we need and we think that we might need more money and maybe you do. But that's not what God is promising all of the time. What he promises is us, he will position us in places and spaces where he can love on us, but also that he can meet our needs through our relationships. This is why the church is so important. This is why being part of a faithful community is so important. Because in the church... Your emotional and relational needs will be met if it's a life-giving church. In the church, your spiritual needs will be catered for and tended to through what we do. And obviously, the working power and presence of God in your life. And if you have a need that is financial, or physical. Guess what? When you're in relationship, in the body, the family of God, as a child of God, your needs will be met. It says in Acts chapter 2, if you look at it, I think it's in 
Verse 46, it says, They sold what they had, and everyone who had need, that need was met. It wasn't that it was a utopian experience, okay? And I think sometimes we think that when we look at Acts chapter 2 and when we look at the early church, it was this utopian experience. And we think, oh, I wish we could be more like the early church. Can I tell you now? No, you don't. They were persecuted. They were hung upside down. They were beaten. They were whipped. But we can learn from how they existed together. And we can see that they had a dependence on each other. They had a dependence on the Father. They had a dependence on the teachings of Jesus. They had a dependence on the outworking and practical impartation of the Holy Spirit in their lives in such a way that they could love each other and love those around them <coughs> and meet each other's needs. Because God promises to meet all our needs. promises. He promises his provision to his children. That's emotional. That's physical. That's relational. That's financial. Promises. And we're not a get-rich-quick church. We're not a prosperity gospel church. But if you have a need, hey, we're here. Yes? We're here. That's the body of Christ. To walk with you as you walk with the Father. Did you hear what I said there? To walk with you as you walk with the Father. And if you're not walking with the Father, well, walk with us because we're walking with him. And we'll show you who he is. Because that's the church. <clears throat> People of God doing the things of God in the name of God for the glory of God. Empowered by the Spirit of God. I wonder this morning, as I close, what is about is it about the character, the nature, and the deity of God that you need to see revealed in your life today? But more importantly than that. I wonder, sorry, excuse me, I wonder what is the faith step that you need to take in order for that to be revealed? Because through faith, favor is revealed. Moses, I close with this. I'm going to come back up to this. Moses is faced with an impossible situation. The nation of Israel have fled from their captivity in, in Egypt. God has set them free. They're no longer slaves and they are fleeing Egypt. And so there's an Egyptian army looking to take their heads off on one side. And there's a sea, river on the, on the other side. It's an impossible situation. Moses has a bit of a conversation with, with God. I won't even attempt to paraphrase it right now. And God says, lift up your staff. <laughs> right? And as he lifts it up, what happens is that the sea parts and the favor of God is revealed. Faith revealed favor. It's a principle. Faith revealed favor. And what does the nation of Israel do? They march on. God's with me. God promises to protect me. God promises his provision. God promises his power. God promises his provision. And they get to the other side and they look back and the army's coming. God says to Moses, just keep it up. And what happens? <coughs> Takes out the earth. Faith revealed. Faith. So 
I wonder this morning, as a child of God, what is your next step? What is your faith step? What is it that God is asking you to do? What is it that God is calling you to? What is it that he's asking you to step into that is beyond your comfort zone but will bring you into a new place of faith with God? Because as a child of God, he's there. He's on the other side of the door. That thing that you're afraid of, that relationship, that circumstance, that potential chaos that you could be encountering in your world and in your life. I'm here. I'll protect you. I'll provide for you. I'll be with you. Hey, guess what? My power's in you. Let's worship God.
like that. We can be called your children, Father. We just ask, Lord, that you would just continue to be with us, to protect us, to provide for us, to bless us, Lord, protect us. And we just thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you have left with us. What a gift, Father. What a gift. We just praise you and honor you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.